Hi guys, today I'm gonna show you one really interesting airsoft pistol. That pistol comes from a brand that is well known in the airsoft world for its really great looking guns and some really nice futuristic designs there. Not only that, but this is actually my very first full auto airsoft pistol. What we will be looking at today is APS Demot Shark Full Automatic Airsoft. Pistol. By the way, at the end of the video, I'm gonna share one really nice trick that I did found out with the APS Shark pistol. And this is the box that this pistol came in. It's hard plastic box, by the way, which is really cool. I do really appreciate that packaging. APS offers some really nice packaging on their guns and I do really like that. In order to open the box, there is a screw on the top of it. Once we remove that piece, we can open it. Here is the gun. What we have inside is sticker with the user manual, interactive one. There is also, a replaceable back grip panel. Really cool. And I believe that's all inside. And here is the pistol. By the way, there is this sticker on the pistol. There is one also on the box. Is it suggestion that this pistol can handle CO2 magazine? Maybe, I don't know, but at least I couldn't find such information on the official web page on APS. I'm not sure if somebody have more knowledge on that one, please let me know. For the time being, I'm gonna remove that. APS Demote Shark. General specifications. Total length of 18.4 centimeters or 7.25 inches. Total weight of 780 grams. Inner barrel diameter of 6.03 millimeters. Total velocity of 320 FPS or somewhere around 1 Joule. Power source green gas and magazine capacity 22 rounds in the magazine. The pistol, I believe, is APS own concept. However, it's more or less based on the Glock platform. And as you see, it pretty looks like a Glock. So let's go over the general features on this gun. Blowback pop-up adjustable, it has a fiber optic in the front and a plain black one. I can say the fiber optic is pretty visible, I have no issues with it, of course I'm not a big fan of the plain black sides at the back, but it's working pretty good. The pistol I believe is with full metal slide with lightweight design and CNC cuts on it, which I do pretty like. There is not so aggressive grip on it, but it does do the job pretty well. I would say I'm not really convinced how good the material and the metal is here. It does look a little bit on the cheap side, I would say. It doesn't look really uh, high quality, maybe it's just my initial impression, I don't know, but for sure I can tell you that part right here, you can see that it's not scratch, but there is piece of metal coming beneath the paint, so, so it doesn't leave me with the feeling of amazing quality. The Shark Pistol also came with threaded barrel in the front for any silencer or tracer units, if you want. On the bottom, we have, of course, Picatinny rail, so if you want to install any flashlights or laser or whatever accessory, there is a place for it. That pistol is advertised as fully ambidextrous. So the first thing is the safety, which is that switch right here. And actually it is on both sides of the pistol. However, I'm not sure about the placement of this safety switch. That's my usual grip. And if you notice, both my point finger on the 
right hand and my left thumb are exactly on that safety switch. I don't see an issue for the thumb just because it's resting on the switch itself. But from the, on the right side, it occupies a big area under my finger and it just bugs me. It just like, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like finger belongs there. If it was a little bit more forward, maybe if it was just on the tip of my finger, I would be able still to switch it and it will be a lot more comfortable. So I have some mixed feeling about that switch. Slight release, however, is only on the left side. And the third one is the Mac release. The button on the left side, it's pretty hard and pretty plastic and it's not well made with simple terms. It just, it feels like sticking too much. It could be a lot better. That's my point. Here is one interesting thing. They say it's ambidextrous. And initially I would think that it's possible for me to switch the button to the right side, which is literally that piece of small plastic that is obviously not a button. However, there is a small notch at the front of it. And actually that does work as a mag release. So this was a nice surprise for me. I don't need to switch the mag release to go on the right side. It's already there. So one from the left, one from the right. And of course that one, it's a little bit tricky. You need to push your thumb a little bit to the front in order to make it work. Okay, one more sticker gone, better. And sometimes there is this thing happening, which, yeah, that's the issue. Okay, now it's working. So you need to push a little bit to the front end of that button and it, it does work. Tricky, but it is here and it's working. However, the magazine, there is a click, but actually, the click is coming from one of the internal parts hitting with the magazine, but not that it's locking. So you see, now it's there. So yeah, you need to be careful with the magazine and you need to make sure it's inserted properly. The APS D-Mode Shark also came with a flat trigger. So there is a slight pull and there is a clear wall after it. It has really nice click, by the way. So there is a hard wall, but it's not like super hard. It's not like the Glock or some other pistols that I have, but there is obviously one and you can really easy feel it and control your trigger movement. I believe the trigger is fully plastic, but uh, it does feel and looks pretty solid in my mind. And I really like the click that's coming with it. So good job on the trigger. APS also claims that it has enlarged trigger guard for gloves usages or fatty fingers, if you want to call it. So is it big? Is it no? I don't know. I don't have any issues with it. Maybe it's not the biggest trigger guard, but for me, it's pretty good. The pistol is advertised with ergonomic grip design and a switchable rear grip panel, which is that part right here. The frame, it's pretty damn hard plastic everywhere. From the top to the bottom to the grip, everything is pretty damn plastic. Feels like plastic, looks like plastic. It looks cheap, guys. There is some kind of grip here in the front, but literally it is the same plastic just a little bit engraved or something like this. For sure it is better with the texture than to be that plain plastic, but there is no wow factor here. It just feels and looks cheap. There is swappable grip panel, but actually the spare panel is even bigger than the current one. That's the current one, that's my spare one. So this one is bigger Currently, as it came out of the box with the smaller grip plate here, it already feels too big 
for me. That part at the bottom feels too wide for my hand currently. And this one is even bigger, so I don't think I'll ever use that one. The grip itself feel, feel okay. There is enough space for my second hand, for my pump and everything here, if we don't count the safety switch that we already cover. But another thing to point out here is that piece right here, that tail, I'm gonna show you right now. I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on that pistol, just for a few seconds. And this is my usual grip. I put my thumb all the way to the top and usually put some pressure. And you can see already what's happening with my thumb right here. Uh, that tail put a lot of pressure on my knuckle right here. And literally it feels a little bit painful if you grab it and squeeze it a little bit harder. So it is too early and I don't yet complain about it, but just as a first look, this is what I see and I'm just showing you guys. That bad boy also came with a built-in magwell inside the grip. That white part at the bottom of the pistol, of the grip, it's actually part of the grip itself. There is no spare part, nothing else here. However, being part of the frame and the grip itself, which is already cheap, I just don't like it. It looks cheap. I just feel if that was a just a spare part, uh, it would improve the look of that pistol five times. So, but it is what it is. Even you like it or you don't, it is here to live with the pistol together forever and ever and ever and ever and until you drop it and break it. If you break it, I guess you will need to replace the whole body or I don't know. The magazine, nothing special. The paint looks a little bit cheap and I can show you already, I don't know if I can make the camera focus right here and right here at that part. Literally that magazine was inserted five or six times to the pistol. There is a nice spring catch. So kudos for that one, but the insertion point where you can actually load your magazine with a speed loader is right here, literally the end of the magazine. And I just did broke it live for you guys. I broke the spring catch at the very top. There is one, a small piece of plastic that was coming also on the top of it. The good part is that the rest of the catch is still with the magazine and the feeding clips and the rest of it is still here. So whew, that was close. And exactly that's my issue with having the insertion point so low. You need to put all that pressure to the spring guide in order to insert a single BB. And if you drop it, this is exactly what happens. You break something. Something I do like on that magazine, this is the Mac cap. It's really damn solid. Literally, I would buy 10 of those and put it on all my magazines currently, on all my pistols. So that's for the magazine. The most important what I bought that pistol is the full auto capabilities of that gun. There is this switch at the top left corner of the slide. Currently, I believe it is on single fire. And if you push it like this, it goes to full auto. One more point on the bad painting. You can see it's already peeling off right here. Uh, Anyway, let's hear the sound of that bad boy. So, single action first, or at least I hope it's single action. By the way, pretty nice. Let's switch to full auto and see what happens. What I can say so far, full auto, nice. I would love to shoot with that one outside. Second, the trigger feels really cool, really nice, really crisp. The initial feeling of that trigger, I can compare it with Canic TP9. I was really impressed of that trigger there. However, that one feels a lot better, a lot easier to operate and a lot faster. So on first impression, the trigger is fantastic. And as I promised, now I'm gonna show you one really nice trick that I found out today with the Shark from APS. 
That's the fully licensed Glock 17 Gen 5 from Umarex. Let me show you. That's the original Glock 17 magazine. And let me move that aside. So far, looks promising. Nice. So, it looks like the pistol is fully compatible with the magazine of the Umarex Glock 17. At least this is what I see currently. And that's fantastic and I'm really excited about. Because the Glock 17 is one of the most efficient green gas pistols that I currently own. And being able to use those magazines on the APS Shark, wow, nice. So even if the Spark magazine doesn't perform so well, I have a backup one from my Glock 17. Not only this one, but I do have two more spare magazine for my Glock. I have four magazine with one pistol. This for, for an airsoft game is fantastic. So final thoughts on APS Demoed Shark. I do really like the design and the overall look of the gun. It has really nice slide with pretty nice cuts on it, fiber optic on the front, and it also provides amazing trigger. You have safety switch and mag release on both sides of the pistol and there is a full automatic mode which it was the biggest selling point for me for that pistol. What I'm not a big fan of is the position of the safety switch. I have mixed feeling on that one and the other thing I'm not a fan of is the magazine insertion. You just not sure when it is inserted when it's not and constantly need to make sure you put it right. The third thing is the general build quality and feel of the gun. As I mentioned, I do like the design the overall look, but it does feel cheap, really scratchable, I would say. But of course, it has its own personality and it is full auto capable. Would I recommend that pistol? It really depends. If you're looking for that specific look and full auto capabilities, I would say this is pretty decent choice. However, if you're looking for fully licensed and something with really nice build and well-made quality, there are some other options for you that you should consider. So if you're looking for really high quality materials, really well-made design and everything else, I would say don't go for the APS. D, you could be a little bit disappointed. The pistol has amazing sights, amazing trigger, and so far it does look it's fully compatible with the Umarex Glock 17 Gen 5 magazines, which is big plus for me just because I have the platform and I have a few spare magazines. So guys, if you have any experience with the Shark T-Mode from APS, let me know in the comments, let me know what you have seen from it and how it behaves. Else, of course, leave me any comments, suggestions on the video below. Click the subscribe button, especially if you want more content on any airsoft pistols, gear and tips. Thank you for watching and have a great day.